The Koi Gig Pod on OTB Sports in association with Cadbury. A player and a half deserves a glass and a half of support. Top pocket goal! It's what dreams are made of. They are going to the World Cup Finals! Hello and welcome to the latest Koi Gig Podcast. I'm Kathleen McNamee and as ever, I am joined by Karen Duggan and Emma Byrne and I presume we're all a bit more emotionally balanced than we were the last time we spoke. Just about. <laughs> Yeah, it's a total come down. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me back to last week. Did you find that this week, like watching the WSL games and I don't know, even the WNL games, that it just wasn't the same? I don't know. I was just like, there's nothing riding on this. It's not as exciting. It's not as like fun. I don't feel like I want to cry every two seconds. No, especially when it's so early in the league as well. And teams are kind of just finding their feet. There's nothing to really get you up and excited about except Man United. So, yay. <laughs> Yeah, well, they had a pretty excellent start, which we will yeah. talk about in further depth later on in the podcast. And we will also have Emma Carroll on in a bit to give us her team of the week. Uh, the Koi Gig Pod and OTB Sports is in association with Cabri FC, official snack partners the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Here at the top of the show, I did want to ask a little about the WNL title race because it's heating up and it's very excited. We've got Wexford at the top on 55, Shells on 54, and then yourselves and Athlone on 52. How are the nerves? Yeah, it's exciting for the neutral. I mean, <laughs> not so great for us. Well, actually, I kind of think at Piedmont, from where we came from mid-season to where we are now, we went through such a rough part in the summer and we dropped so many points. I don't think we thought we'd still be in contention, but there's been little slip ups here and there with um, Shelburne and Wexford to make it interesting. And the fact that that's the final game of the season, um, it's really all on a knife edge for both of them. So in terms of pressure, I think it's not to deflect, but it's obviously on the two of them. And then it's kind of a, a shot to nothing and a, a hope for ourselves in Athlone. Um, but yeah, hoping for a couple upsets this weekend, but unfortunately it wasn't to be strong performances from Wexford in particular, putting five past a, a good Sligo team. And then, you know, Shells just seem to know how to win, unfortunately. You say a good Sligo team to make me feel better about it. Well, no, I well have... also I'm saying a good Sligo team because I want them to win next week. <laughs> That's <what's... laughs> Well, because like, I know if I asked you this question a couple of weeks ago and or anything about Piedmont, it would just be like general despair from that. Yeah, well, I would have pretended that my internet connection dropped, to be honest. But <laughs> there's actually just been a good buzz around the place. I mean, we stopped conceded stupid goals. I mean, we have six clean sheets in a row, um, which is really good. We converted a winger. Remember, you'll remember Jetta Barrel converted her into a centre back. And honestly, the centre back. Centre wow. back. She's rapid. So like oh, she's I know. so crazy. She's, She's lightning. lightning. So yeah, that's been a difference. Neve Reed Burke, obviously, really happy with her clean sheets um, as well. So yeah, it's hotting up again. Next weekend's big. Us against Wexford. Shell will be hoping we take mm. points, but obviously, it's very hard to root for your local rivals as well. So <laughs> yeah, good, good crack. Yeah, anyway, hopefully, we'll start to get a few good crowds for the last couple of games. Anyway, don't Wexford play Shells in the final day then? The as final well, final game of the season yeah. down in Wexford as well. It's not easy for Shells. Shells are obviously favourites, Um, I would think. Even though Wexford are sitting top, Wexford have a harder run in the last two games, probably. Um, Athlone could sneak up as well. Their run in is nice. They definitely could. And like, but that's, it's so great for the league that once again, we're in this position where it's coming to, because it did look for a while that if there was going to be a runaway winner. And then, as you said. Hey, I mean, Shells were, what, 11 points clear at one point. So, yeah, it's definitely... Definitely interesting. Um, we thought that all the drama was done after our implosion last year, but it's good to see other teams kind of getting, getting a bit shaky. <laughs> <Catching too. the laughs> it's not just us. And what about you, Emma? How did you spend your weekend? Football, watching a lot of football. Um, yeah, so I like the way the games panned out this weekend. They're like, that's the way it should be, shouldn't it? All different kickoff times, different days. Then you get a chance to watch everyone. I think there was only two games that, that kicked off the same time, which was nice. So, of course, from Saturday to Sunday, you're watching lots of footy. I had planned on going out on Sunday night what day is today Monday Tuesday I had planned on going out on Sunday night but um got completely lazy and started watching television so I literally haven't you got have work. changed, you changed. <laughs> oh I totally have Karen. Oh I totally have where are you 
all these young pups out there I can't keep up with them plus I have two pups of my own so like they need my attention <laughs> and I, I, I did bring them for a walk I'm not like I hope together. this isn't you setting the seed for pulling out of our Christmas night out to celebrate the Absolutely World Cup qualification not. That's Good. booked in. That Good. is totally locked in. Actually, nobody replied to me. Are we all I know, Well, you know I'll be there. So it'll just be the two of us probably. Kathleen, will you come? Please. Sure. Why not? Know. It'll be just us. We can we do can the pod. Party yeah. if else turns up. <laughs> Love that. That'd be and great. Parties as well. We do need to give a little round of applause for the podcast, which has been nominated for podcast best podcast in the country in the digital media awards which was very exciting on friday it was quite funny because someone just tagged like off the ball and on twitter and i saw it and i was like ha, don't remember us being us? nominated for that and i was like oh, look at us go so yeah i think the 11th of november is when we will find out whether we won or not but either way we will commemorate it and thanks everyone who has shown the podcast support especially in the last week, I've had a lot of messages from people and a lot of really nice things since um, the World Cup qualification, just with people saying, you know, this is the podcast that has been telling these stories for the last year um, and no one else is really doing that. So thank you to all the people who did that. It was very, very welcomed. Um, do you guys, are you looking forward to the World Cup draw at the weekend? Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to England. As soon as England come out of that hat, I'll be like saying... I heard you on the radio at the weekend (laughs) going for England again, being like, please come over. (laughs) We want to play you. Um, I I mean, New Zealand, though. I I think I fancy a trip to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, The winter, I think that'd be pretty cool. I mean, we're we're going, so like that's bad. Like it doesn't really matter whether it's Australia or New Zealand, but I too would love to go to New Zealand. So if anybody has any sway in that, it's not rigged (laughs) at all, never fixed. Never. Um, But yeah, it's gonna it's very, very exciting. I just can't believe we're in it. Like no. Just can't believe I'm going through my Twitter feed and I'm like the draw. Oh. We're in this. We're in this one. I'm actually so interested in this draw. That's so good. It's great to see our little name in there in the mix. Definitely. Every so often the commentary from yourself and Nathan at the end of the game comes up on my Twitter feed and I can just feel the little tear like rising in my eye again. And I'm like, oh, to go back and relive it all. (laughs) Oh, it was class, wasn't it? It's uh, it's just so weird then going straight into the, the both leagues in Ireland and, and England and just like but that's there's Katie playing left back yeah <laughs> just She's qualified back. for a world cup there she is defending <laughs> I know and it's not like they have any break either because they're straight into Champions League this week as well yeah. and you know it's it's a pretty hectic schedule for the anyone who's playing in those international fair play to them for getting their heads back into it because I know I'd still be all over the place after that like I was till about Thursday I was still scrolling through Twitter furiously trying to get new clips and stuff so for them to get back into the swing of things very very impressive yeah I actually became that person with the phone like literally my finger glued to the phone and I can't stand it when you're out with somebody and they're on the phone all the time that was me (laughs) and everyone was just like Christ Emma like are you you expecting news and I was like no I don't even know what I'm looking for (laughs) just more talk about it more, Something just else. more. <laughs> All the content. Well, we will bring full reaction to the draw to everyone next Tuesday. But coming up next on the podcast, we have Emma Carroll and her team of the week. Joining us now is Emma Carroll, who has done her duty beautifully, as always. I was told I wasn't allowed to pick any holes in this team of the week when I was leaving <laughs> the office earlier, so I'm being extra nice. Uh, Emma, how are you doing? Good. It's been a busy day. It's been a busy day. <laughs> has been a busy day. Lots of moving around and the likes. Um, would you like to dive straight in and give us your team? Yeah, in goal, I went for Jackie Bournes uh, for the back with Neville, Gabby George, Gemma Evans and Una Badier. Uh, Kind of a 4 4 2 this week. Uh, Leah Galton, Ella Toon, Kim Little, and I think it's Celine Bizet from Spurs, and Bunny Shaw and Pernilla Harda up front. It's a good yeah. team, especially that up front. Emma's like diving to get in already. I can see. No, she's- no, I, I like it. I, I, I really like it. Yeah, I might have 
Burns did really well, but I was going to ask because there could have been a number of keepers this week that could have gone. And the fact it. her name's Burns, no, it just yeah. <laughs> can't be in there. She's not allowed. She's not allowed playing goal. Um, I love Mary Earps's save for me was just absolutely uh-huh. yeah. So that's one of the positions I would have said maybe stick her in there. Um, but but yeah, in general, great great team. Right, I'm glad to see Galton in there because I thought she was in incredible I, yeah. she just blew my mind I, I keep tweeting about man united um which i'm getting in a bit of trouble which for i love yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it pains me too but they're so good at the moment they are so awesome watch. aren't they but yeah. golden for me she just intrigues me as well the fact that she hasn't got the appetite to be the best like she's not bothered she's not bothered if she plays at a high level really she just wants to play but she was incredible i just thought she was so unselfish like the way she could have gone in and goal and just an absolutely beautiful ball into tune so yeah Galton in there 100 percent for me yeah, yeah I thought Galton was brilliant I thought yeah a lot of the United team was brilliant like there could be shared for Garcia Stanny Ford as well like they all played brilliantly really yeah. um, when tune picks up the ball like Galton is just gone as well. Their link up play is so, so good. And it's quick, like they're not hanging around on the ball. They don't let the defense get a chance to get settled. Um, I thought Brighton probably played too high a line against them, a bit naive, maybe, or maybe they just didn't expect them to move at the pace they did. But yeah, that trio of Garcia, um, Galton, and Toon was looking pretty good. And they still have Russo to come back. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Brighton. Are, I feel like Brighton went into that game a little bit naive, to yeah. be quite honest. I mean, they left the wide areas open, which is an absolute death trap because United are so good down the 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 wide areas. In fact, you have to you have to play a, a different system. You have to cover the wide areas because they don't generally play through the middle that much. So I was surprised at Hope Powell that she didn't change that quicker because um, she is quite tactically astute. But yeah, they, they got into all sorts of trouble. But that's why I can't wait to watch United play like a really good team because I don't feel like they've been tested yet. Mm. Um, So I'm looking forward to a couple of their games. Emma, I thought up. you'd have a few more shouts for a couple more City players in there. Possibly have yeah, to go Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. the who? The who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hasegawa. Hasegawa? Yeah. She was brilliant. Yeah. I she mean, like the reason... In, the reason I wasn't really saying much about her because the goal was brilliant, mm. but City really needed a defensive hold midfielder. And she was caught out a couple of times. I think she's a brilliant player, but she's not a she's not a defender, is she? She's not a hold midfielder. She needs to play higher up. So that's the only reason I wouldn't have put her in there because I don't think she played what you know her best, what she can play, but that's because she was the holding player. But yeah, I mean, apart from that, hemp. I mean, you thought hemp was back to. Can, I, can you have hemp season. in there every week? It's a yeah. shame. You, you don't want to say <laughs> the same player for a long time. Last yeah. season, that was last honest. season, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, you want to try and put other people in there, even though let's be honest, hemp should be in there. But we're going to see her name loads. Yeah, <laughs> true. So yeah, no. In general, I I do agree with that team. Kim Little. I mean, I don't care. She's in there every week. She's just class. Yeah, still yeah. in there, even with a penalty miss. I mean, that says something about how good she was. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. I mean, she saw a penalty, team. wasn't it? Wasn't yeah. it? She was, she was watching her mate, wasn't she, last yeah. week? <laughs> <laughs> <Shots fired. laughs> but, um, but the turn in the past where Black Stenny's goal was just incredible as well. Like She's just yeah. a little magician. She's just brilliant. Every week again, another yeah. nailed yeah. on. Yeah, it's going to be a tough battle, I think, next or every week for that left full position between Neville, Wrighton, and McCabe. Mm. I mean, Guru Wrighton, I thought. Well, I thought I agree. Wrighton is one of the ones that I probably would have had in my team. I thought she was one of Chelsea's best players. Yeah, but she dived. She dived. She can't be in the team of the week if she dives. (laughs) No, and against against one of her own? No, no, no. no. Setting the standards (laughs) here, Emma. That's it. Good stuff. (laughs) I, I thought Brosnan was hard penalty. done by there, all right. Yeah, it was never wasn't a penalty. penalty. Wasn't, never a penalty. wasn't a penalty. No. Harder back as well. I mean, Chelsea, they missed her, didn't they? Kind of didn't realise until she was back. She Even when she went more. off, you feel like they were lacking again. Like, 
you know it's just something that's not clicking going forward and yeah she looked like a threat straight away that's it that's it they're not clicking but you know you when you watch Chelsea and then you watch Arsenal it's like Arsenal are on a different level like they just play much better as a team and actually towards the end of last season I was thinking the same about Chelsea like how do you set up against them you can't because they don't play a certain way they yeah. just kind of play their individual players. And I, I'm seeing that again. And I think without Harder, we spoke about this already loads of times, haven't we? She is the link up player. She is that player that runs and drives and, and is very dangerous. And when they don't have her, nobody else does it. They're very, very yeah. easy. She's a good target player as well. Like they do have her and they've got people running channels as well. But when they need it to just get a few balls in the box, like she's there. Um, so it's good to be able to, when you have crossers of the ball, like right in, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you could just play five at the back like Liverpool did and keep them out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is what I mean. Do they have the plan B? Can they get, you know, when they play against Arsenal like, is a big one. Arsenal are better defensively this season as well. So I think, uh, I don't know. And I they're not hit with injuries. Yeah. yeah. Say, when they're full strength, yeah. which they probably won't be for a while now because I think Leah Williamson is out until after the November internationals at least. Mm. Did they say what what exactly her injury is? No. no, I don't think they've released it yet. They still just say that. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> she's in a boot. There's obviously something up. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, the biggest one is Raffaele. Raffaele. You said that at the start of the season. They yeah. need to keep her fit. He's um, incredible. Yeah. She's such a good player. And and just speaking to Katie as well, like she's like Emma. She's quality. She's quality. Um, so she's a big miss, especially for for this week. Good luck, good luck, and Leon missing yeah. two main central defenders. God, we won't think about that for now. We'll just focus on the weekend results and deal with that. <laughs> That's a, a future Kathleen problem, as I like to say. Um, Emma, thank you so much for joining us. No worries. And now we come to the fun part of the podcast where we get to talk through every single match individually and give you all the best analysis from two of the best sporting minds in the country. And look at the two of them smiling at me like, what, <laughs> what's she going to ask us next? What does she want? <laughs> yeah, flattery leads you nowhere. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I guess we still wear sometimes with you, Karen. <laughs> um, I think... We might as well start with one of the most exciting ties of the weekend, possibly for all the wrong reasons. But uh, Aston Villa and West Ham really had everything. It had punches thrown. It had a melee on the side of the pitch where coaches sent off. Um, it had a penalty taker who wasn't supposed to be taking penalties and managers calling them out after the game. Like, I mean, if you got that across a couple of matches, you'd be pretty happy. But all in one match, it was a bit mental. Every time I checked in on the game, I was like, Something yeah, else. when I looked at the fixture list, this wasn't the one I was most excited by, but this is the most talking points, probably. It was no. literally the one where I was like, we may not even cover it. Like when I was planning ahead of it, yeah. but then it happened and I was like, well, we have to talk about this. Um, I mean, absolutely mental game. I don't even know really where to start with it. Uh, <laughs> uh, start with West Ham having two shots and two goals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, how how quick did did West Ham start? An absolute dream start because, I mean, we've been talking about Villa the last few weeks and how good they are. You've seen them at City; they absolutely destroyed them. They're doing so well. Probably the best signings um, with Rachel Daly coming back, and and then West Ham came out and, and absolutely shocked them. They stunned them. Um, oh, it was a great game. I was actually looking forward to this game because I do think these two teams are dark horses in the league. Um, well, well, I didn't not, think that, but West Aston Villa have been really good to watch. Aston Villa have been really good them, yeah. to watch. So not so much of a dark horse, but yeah. West Ham. Yeah, I think they, I mean, they've got great players, don't they? Yeah. So I'm just waiting for them to get even better. I thought it was a great game, great game to watch. And yeah the next day all the the social media was about the punch up on the pitch which was just it was a little bit bizarre to be quite honest I mean it yeah. just I was waiting for someone to go in and stop it you know and like in men's football they swarm the players like immediately these two were kind of going at it for they, they had three bites of the cherry there like I think Sissoko was like well I'm getting sent off I may as well keep going 
Yeah, for anyone who didn't see it, it was Sarah Mailing put in a challenge on Sosoku. Professional and... foul. They were on the break. I mean, it was... Yeah, Good like it, there was nothing. It wasn't like a killer challenge or anything. Like it was one you'll happily be annoyed about, but not anything major. And she just got up and went straight for her. And then obviously Mailing started pushing her back. And then Sosoku, it was kind of the mixture between like a punch and a slap. Like she didn't really fully kill her. It was open hand. She's going to yeah. argue. It wasn't a punch. Kind of like a pushing her face away attempt, but it ended up being a bit more forceful than that. And uh, Sissoku was I wouldn't mess with her. No. I would not mess with Sissoku. Those aren't like... I'd have taken the first hit and gone down crying. Yeah. After that. <laughs> uh, well, arguably, uh, the two of them should have been sent off. I mean, yeah. no, no, even no. if it was uh, two yellow cards for mailing one for the challenge and one for uh, afterwards. Um, and then she went, yeah. this was like on the 91st minute or something. Sissoku went off and then Villa and West Ham support staff and coaches started having a go at each other, which led to Koncheski being sent off as well. He said he was defending his players um, because of stuff that the opposition were saying about them. And uh, Carla Ward was a little less accepting of that after the game. She was like, I've never seen anything like it. It was totally unacceptable. Uh, and it shouldn't be in the game and Malie in the dugout is not okay so she has something you don't see in the women's game all that much so it's definitely a big talking point for Koncheski to get sent off and then try and defend someone who obviously did give someone a good slap was a bit of an interesting interview I thought I feel like he was trying to pretend like he hadn't really seen it he was like oh I saw something but I don't really know what I saw but was he not um, more annoyed with what was happening after as she was walking off, like she was getting dogs yeah. abused from the opposition staff as well as she was coming off the, the, the pitch? So possibly. Yeah, no, I think it was that as well. Um, And another incident I want to talk about from this game is the weird situation with the penalty. Um, so Unacceptable. Yeah, so Carla Ward could be heard saying on the side of the pitch, why aren't you effing taking that? It's your penalty to Rachel Daly. Um, and then after the match, she came out and she said, it's clear as day. Everyone knows Rachel Daly takes penalties. It hasn't happened. Doesn't matter why. It's in-house. It can't happen again. If we say who's on penalties, they're on penalties. And she confirmed that she had talked to Alicia Lehman about it. What do you guys think? Like, was it just... Uh, it was weird because you think Daly as well would go up to her and be like... And the penalty taker. Daly's going to want to be going for Villa's top goal scorer and be in amongst it in general for top goal scorers in the WSL. For her not to take the penalty, having scored a couple already, made no sense. Yeah, I mean, unless you had injured or just something like that, but you have it. Really... You have it in men's football as well, right? You, we've seen that before, but we've seen them scrapping over the ball. Yeah. Um, I was surprised Rachel Daly, being a you know an experienced international as well, she's not a kid. No. I'm surprised she didn't step up and say, you know, you know, I'm taking penalties. End of story. But I don't know why Ward was shouting that from the sideline. I mean, everybody needs to cop on a little bit. The game is not, it's not 10 years ago. Everybody can hear what you say. There are microphones everywhere. That's what started it off. We would never even have known any different, would we, if she hadn't shouted that on. Um, but would have been curious why Daly didn't take it, but you wouldn't have had any proof. You would have just been like, oh, maybe it's a change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe you have to... If, if it's very, very clear, then yeah, I would be going mad on the sideline. But maybe she hasn't made that clear. Rachel Daly is on penalties for the whole season. Did she actually say that? I doubt it. You just say, Rachel, you'll be on the penalties and then you'd go on from there. I think it was just a misunderstanding. But um, I'm, I'm more surprised at Rachel Daly, to be honest, because... Yeah, it was a costly misunderstanding, because if that had gone in, it was a bit earlier. Uh, Villa had a lot of possession. They were in the ascendancy. Thought Daly again was... Very, very bright. She's a great player, great goal. So impressive. Um, but she was on it again. She just they just couldn't get that final ball. Like they hit the post from headers, they were doing everything but score. Mm. Yeah. No, Dali, Dali's the Dali's best for me, the best signing of yes. of the whole league. Mm-hmm. I think she's brilliant. It's great to have her here out mm. in the WSL. She was trying to calm down Sissoko, I think. I think they're all a little bit shy. Briefly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone it just reminded me of you know that picture of Katie McGabe from the was it the Spurs game Spurs game last year mm. was it 
yeah yeah where she it's like a piece of art where her hand is just backwards and I think it's Beth Mead or someone kind of holding her back to make <laughs> what they needed was a Beth Mead there to kind of like hold on to you and make sure you weren't getting near anyone and um, moving on to our next game of the weekend we have Man United 4 Brighton nil. Karen is smiling away happy as Larry um I mean this Manchester United team has been so impressive this season. They're still undefeated, like Arsenal. They're at the top of the table now on goal difference. They haven't even had Alessia Russo. She's still out for another two or three weeks. It's their ninth successive home league win. And it's the first time that they've ever done this in the WSL in the opening three games. And it kind of feels like, I know, Emma, you were saying earlier that you're looking forward to them actually facing some tougher opposition. I think they've Chelsea on November 6th and then it's Arsenal on November 19th so I feel like that will be the that'll be a test yeah <laughs> that'll yeah. be the two weeks to really see what they're made of yeah I mean they're just I didn't think they've just had a brilliant start I thought they were impressive last season but I they were kids I felt like they were kids kind of you know congelling together well. yeah they were they were more open yeah. they were conceding but then bringing in Letizia again really bolstered that defence and three clean sheets and, and, and yeah. Mary Earps is Mary Earps I mean she's... Mary Earps is uh is it's just a changed woman I mean yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put it out there I thought she was pure average last season and I actually thought she'd be a weak link in England's team because of her season and I know that's quite a big thing to say considering I haven't yeah <laughs> <laughs> but actually she's completely you know proved me wrong I thought the start of the seat obviously she had a great Euros which I, I was really happy for for um but the start of the season as well it's just she's been so consistent that save she made was absolutely world class was brilliant it was an absolutely mm. brilliant save I was watching it on my own and I was like did you see that <laughs> to the dogs did you see the save it was just brilliant so like they've they basically don't have one weak area on the team which is where you want to be and then building on that they've got incredible players and great link-up play I mean that Spanish right-hand side would destroy Love anybody it. I mean yeah. that's going to be interesting see how Katie deals with that to be quite honest she won't want to defend against them and then of course you've got Galton and Toon who have lovely link-up plays play really get well together I said it before I am looking forward to seeing them play a very strong midfield so like a Chelsea or an Arsenal you know play that um strong midfield because I do think that's where they haven't been tested and maybe their weakest unit yeah like a team that will be able to force it in through the middle and kind of nullify the United wide areas where they got so much success at the weekend will be very interesting because they haven't had to adapt in any of the games so far like it's been pretty plain sailing but all good so far so good and Skinner was saying obviously he wanted more goals in the second half but it was almost like they were too eager to score that they lost a little bit of their shape um but the the job was done more than done by halftime well he seems really ambitious for this team as well like I said after the game that they are going to need a flawless season if they want to take one of those top spots and that that's what they're aiming for and he knows he has the team to do it which he was quite open last year at feeling like he didn't have the team to do it so I think he's been quite an interesting managerial choice for United and possibly the right person to take up from Casey like it seems to have been quite a smart move by United to get him on um board earlier you guys were saying that with Brighton that they played quite naively against this United team which is kind of a strange word to associate with someone like Hope Powell do you think it was a case of her I don't know just overthinking her tactics against United or not having the players to actually properly put it up against them because I just feel like once again we're here looking at this Brighton team being like oh there's some good young talent on it you know, they have one of the a manager who's been in the game for so long that on paper, they should be doing a lot better than they are. I don't think they're good enough, personally. I don't, you know, they have good players. They've, you know, a team that probably would have done really well three seasons ago. But the fact is, every single team in the league now, apart from Leicester, I have to look at Liverpool a bit more mm -hmm. um, ha have all developed and got even better. There, there's no room for average, a full average team. And unfortunately, I don't think Brighton have the players at the moment to do that. Um, Hope's a really good manager. She's very good tactically. She knows the game, but there's only so much you can do. And 
they play, don't get me wrong, they're playing against a really good team. So it's difficult to judge them on that. And I'm sure, and I'm hoping we're talking differently about them towards the middle of the season. But at the moment, I just can't see where they're going to get that from. It's good to see Dan Carter back because she's a quality striker and they really needed that. So it's great to see her back, but they are missing a good three or four players in there. Yeah, it might come to a point where they're going to have to look to become a bit more of a negative team just to stem the flow of goals that they're conceding. Um, Because, yeah, they were just caught open far too easily, left gaps way too wide and they were just too square. Their back line was so square and they didn't have the pace to recover when the ball went. Yeah, I mean... When you were looking at the game, it's a really bad sign when you yeah. see the unit so flat. I'm thinking yeah. it's a dream to play against. Just if you can slot it through them, it's so easy, especially if you've got pace, which this is what's changed in the game. I feel I feel like the players are much quicker. We play much quicker. And if you're in any way slow, there's no room for you in the game anymore. The fourth goal really saw that it was just a long ball out to the wing. And Galton, I don't think she meant that first touch. I'm not sure if she did, but no, it was straight, she, no, right, no. <laughs> straight into Leon, who she was just able to glide past them. And it was what two touches took the whole four, back, back four out of it. Exactly. And as well, when it's coming towards the last 15 minutes of the game, you can see the Brighton players, they're getting lethargic, they're getting leggy. And then a team like Man United bring players, fresh players on who are, would start in any other team. It's absolutely soul destroying for them. And yeah, they've got a bit of work to do, unfortunately. And to turn our attention to another one of the games, uh, Everton won Chelsea 3, the return of Pernell Harder. It's the first time she has featured the season. Chelsea fans would be very, very happy to see her back. Obviously, like quite a tough game for the Chelsea players. Um, Chelsea released a statement during the week saying that Emma Hayes had to undergo an emergency hysterectomy. I can never say that word. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, and they were all wearing training tops before. And actually the men did as well, you know, wishing her luck. So, I, sh- I mean, she has such a good management set up there. I'm sure on that side of things, it didn't impact their setup for the game too much. And obviously we send all our luck to her in terms of getting ready. But I think, you know, for them to come out and put in the performance that they did was quite impressive considering everything that had gone on during the week and I mean I, I know they are playing Everton but like this Everton team has been much more impressive this season than they have been so far it was 2013 though the last time that they beat Chelsea so it has been quite a long time um what did you think of the that Chelsea is that, that's when I was playing as well <laughs> that was a long time ago <laughs> Well, I thought th- Everton were really good, actually. I think they're a team to watch. I agree. I mean, the third goal came because Everton were actually pushing for an equaliser, which you yeah. wouldn't really think they would be at that stage of the game. Um, but they they can create, yeah. I mean, Chelsea really struggled to score against them. They really struggled to break them down. And at one stage, I was like, Do you know what? Chelsea, they need to, to go into another gear because otherwise they'll be only getting a point from this game. And Everton were equally as good as them and equally as impressive, like with George. And I thought they were really good. They battled really well. I thought Brosnan did really well as well again. Um, and I thought the penalty, penalty was I thought the penalty was the turning point. Yeah. Because mm. and I don't think it was a penalty, and it was a shame because um I mean that's the referee had she had a good view of it as well, and I wasn't even wearing my glasses, so that's <laughs> saying something. I was like, I don't think that's not a penalty. It's not a penalty, and you could see even with Courtney the way she she had to go, but she didn't have to go to ground, and that was the problem. But I don't think she touched her at all in any way. So yeah, I think the penalty was the turning point, and if that had gone Everton's way maybe we wouldn't be talking about Chelsea getting the three points because I think they really struggled how do you think that like sets them up for PSG (laughs) they still have enough PSG um yeah I mean I quite fancy Chelsea to be honest I fancy Chelsea in this Champions League they've been you have to go through so much heartache as we know being Irish (laughs) you have to go through especially with the Champions League you have to go through it three or four times to realize exactly what you need to, to win it. And that's simple things like you can't make a mistake. You can see the goal. You can't give the ball away. You can see the goal. You can, like you have to be very, very good. And I just think this is their year to go further. I'm not saying they're going to win it, but they should be going further. Um, they already got a spanking from Barca in the final, which should have been their 
their learning point. But I just feel like they needed another year to get there. And I, I think they look good. And to be honest, I was watching PSG. I wasn't overly impressed with them either. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Remains to be seen. Do we think Liverpool are missing Leanne Kearden up front? We've only scored one goal since that match against Chelsea and that was in the cup against Sunderland. I mean, how can you not play that throw in? Yeah. I wouldn't care if Megan Campbell didn't have hamstrings left. If yeah. she just stood on the sideline, she has to play because yeah, I mean, it, Liverpool know they're going to have to uh, like make the most of things like set pieces and stuff like that. Matt Beard's not naive in that way. So I am surprised that she's just not in there, Megan Campbell. Um, I mean, yeah. she made a mistake against Everton. I mean, she started against Everton. She made yeah. a mistake against Everton, but can't be the reason why she hasn't started. I don't know. But those throw-ins alone, I mean, if I'm playing against Liverpool, the only thing I'm really going to be worried about is that throw-in, being quite honest. And that's Especially no without Leanne on the counter. Without exactly. Leanne. So without the Leanne, counter. without that pace up front. No disrespect to them, but that throw-in, I mean, it's ridiculous. She should be playing. She should be on the pitch. I don't I don't really get it so where do you think like Liverpool have gone wrong then in the last I mean obviously talk about Ben Campbell and the throw-ins but like they looked so promising at the start of the season and they seem to have just wilted seriously you know we were after that first match we were like oh this is exciting they're going to do something but since then it's just been a downward trend I think they're a little bit like Ireland or Ireland were anyway better they against the good. they played against teams, teams. Exactly. Yeah. They played against Chelsea. They did really well, but they defended. Let's be honest. They parked the bus and then they got a couple of chances that they did really well with. But the last two games, they have played against teams that maybe they think they should have went and got points off. And so they went at them, which like Ireland, we're very good defensively in that back five. But as soon as we step out of that back five or try to, when we have the ball, basically, when Liverpool have the ball, they're the most vulnerable and they don't keep the ball well enough. They're a no, team that they lose it in really like dangerous areas. I've seen them lose it kind of around that number six area yeah. too often. And they're lucky that Spurs hit the woodwork and it's, yeah, they're yeah. trying to play out when sometimes they just need to get the ball down the pitch. And again, even defensively, those throw-ins could come in handy there. <laughs> it's the, the throw-ins. The it's because they're not getting the throw-ins. No, but that's it. They're not keeping the ball well enough to be a team that's good in possession. And and silly balls as well. Like Karen says, um, someone's setting the the fire someone's starting a fire in my head um they're losing the ball in midfield but they're losing even higher up the pitch in that number 10 role as well they're doing square balls there and then yeah. teams are just countering and they can't unfortunately they can't um they can't afford that because of the pace that the other teams have as well we talk about pace we're still talking about pace and and this is a problem for liverpool as well Manchester City finally getting some proper points on the board and your favourite Bunny Shaw on the scoreboard twice and I'm sure you were I actually thought about you when I saw that I was like <laughs> Emma's going to be delighted on Monday um, but it's yes. kind of it is nice to see her linking up with Chloe Kelly and Lauren Hemp in a way we probably haven't seen all that much from the three of them just probably because they're getting time to play together this season as well yeah I mean Bunny's not a link up player Bunny is that Target. box in the box <laughs> she she would be that player that would drive you insane if you're playing world cup on the green she's a poacher she stays in and around that area and that's how city have to play around her and um, the good thing is they've got excellent wingers uh, so yeah i'm glad to see that finally working out <clears throat> and i'm glad to see now I think Chloe Kelly and uh, Hemp have realised that. They've realised that crossing is the best way, not necessarily driving in with the ball, that an early cross is better, which is great. Um, also, I think Dana Castellanos has been is settling in very nicely. She's a very good player, technically good. And of course, we were talking about Has Hasegawa as oh, well. Yeah. Not a holding midfielder, by the way, but um, did really well. She keeps the ball really well. Uh, and then when she did go a little bit higher, when she could, you could see exactly what she did. But also speaking about City, um, talking about Laia Alexandri finally playing in the position she wants to play in, which is centre-back. And I thought she was excellent back there as well. 
Poor Leicester haven't shown Anton yet so Ooh. far this season, though it could be. Poor Leicester. Yeah. Poor Leicester. I mean, I was listening to the commentary and they were like, it's too early. It's too early to talk about. Rel- it's not too early. Leicester, no. Leicester are going down. <laughs> yeah, they needed to improve from last season. Like They were lucky that Birmingham just couldn't put away some of those or nick some of those draws because Birmingham probably were a little bit better even at times during the season. You know what? I was talking to some players, not City players before Mm -hmm. anyone says, I was talking (laughs) to some players and we were talking about Leicester and talking about Birmingham and Liverpool and they were like, actually, I would prefer to play the likes of Leicester and Liverpool than Birmingham. Birmingham would cause us more problems. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We saw that even last season that they did trip up some Teams bigger teams point. yeah I mean they could just live off that Arsenal win for the rest yeah. of their life <laughs> I, I didn't want to actually say it out loud and live through the trauma of that weekend and finally speaking of Arsenal uh 1-0 win against Reading tiny bit detrimental to them in the sense that they kind of needed to get those goals especially the fact that Reading are on no points they're only the only reason they're on not on the bottom of the table is because Leicester have letting more goals than them um and 21 shots on goal only six on target I know there was a lot of worry going into the game about like our Ar- Arsenal's defensive issues but against a team like Reading you'd kind of hope that that wouldn't be a massive worry it, it's a factor but it's not a massive worry yeah well do you know what I actually was again a team I was impressed with was Reading because I've watched them um play a couple of times now and I thought they were going to get absolutely so hammered. did I I thought it was going to be five or six going into the game really just based did. on the last couple of weeks yeah. yeah yeah and how they've defended and watching them against United and Arsenal are for me the best team in the league so I was thinking we're going to get absolutely destroyed here I'm saying we my, my best friend plays for for Reading so I was worried for her more than anything um but actually they were quite impressive and actually I thought Arsenal can, you know, they'd probably be saying few and wiping their brow after that game because it wasn't easy for them at all. It wasn't easy at all. And, you know, Les- Leicester, Reading, um, they could have equalised at one stage. Yeah. And it's strange. It's strange for me because I know we speak about Katie. Katie can't play left. I mean, she can, but I mean, you can't have her there. She has to play higher up the pitch. And I'm not just saying that because she's Irish. I'm saying it because she is one of the best attacking players in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And then you've got, you like against Leon, it's going to be interesting because I know she's going to be pinned back there. And it's a shame because I think she can be very dangerous. And I feel like Arsenal have a problem at the moment, not with Black Stenius. I think she's a great player, but with Viviana Medema because she wants to play a deeper role, but she's not as good there. I mean, no. why does she want to play there? She's not as good there. She's does she want to play there, or is that where she's being played and she has to agree? No, I think, to I think she, she, she wants to. I think yeah. she wants to play in that she's role. Quite a lot about yeah, yeah. I guess she want, thinks she'll be more involved in the game there, but I mean, just let little do that business in there and slip the passes into it. Why would you want to work back there? Just stay up and get all the glory. No, oh. but in all fairness, like I have seen her playing in the false nine and she's very good, but that's not the same thing no. as starting in that number 10 position or deeper in midfield. It's not the same thing. I think she is an excellent false nine. And I think that's where she should be playing because for me, I haven't seen her. I know she's been scoring goals. I know people are talking about her, but to be quite honest, I still haven't seen a performance from Medema that I know she can give. And I think she looks frustrated as well. Even when Blacksenia scored the goal, she was straight over talking tactics to her about what's going to come next instead of kind of celebrating. She's, mm-hmm. I don't think she's fully happy with mm-hmm. how things are going. The thing is it her. could work. It could work for them. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think Black Stenius is one of the best at running into the channels as well. She absolutely destroyed Ireland in, in Tala that yeah. night doing that. I think if they p- kind of had that kind of plan of attack, that if you put it into the corners for Black Stenius and then Viv going into that number nine position, that could work. But mm-hmm. at the moment, I don't think Viv's getting in that position enough. And I think as well, it's been such a long time since we actually talked about her as the sort of player we know she is like it's been a really long time since I've listened to someone uh, over a couple of matches be like oh my god what have you did you see the medium of pass did you see the medium of goal did you see what she was doing last night it feels like 
it's almost because we expect her to be that good we kind of put that label on her but she just hasn't she hasn't been there for a long time which is quite sad um because she is so good i think it was that pass wasn't it last season yeah. that, pass, yeah, that yeah. deep pass into black stenius that was a, an amazing goal but mm-hmm. You don't really want her back there. You've got, and also you've got other players that play better in that position. So yeah, yeah. it's a it's a lose lose if you ask me. And the question is, can they both play together as a two up top? I think they can. I think they'd actually. I be think a- they're both clever enough and yeah. both strong enough to play off each other. And it could come with time if they do go just say two up top and work it out between you. What did you think of the substitutes? I thought them happening in like sixty six minutes when you're only one nil up. And then Reading nearly scored straight after. I think uh, Idaval has been like, no, we're not looking for next week for yeah. the Leon game. No, we're and a bit no, slippy. The I conditions think, are getting slippy. And maybe I think you were, tired. that's exactly oh. what you were thinking about, mate. Get the, the players <laughs> off, make sure we have the full team. Yeah. I, mean, I don't blame them. Two big players in the back missing. Um, the yeah, massive, you're going to need Walty's well, work game. rate and Floyd's work rate during the week. Um, So yeah. maybe giving them half an hour off wasn't. A bad call. No, I no. mean it's he's they're under pressure. I think it's a really nobody'd want that job. Who would want that job as Arsenal manager because they're under pressure? And I mean, we put them under pressure by <laughs> winning it all those years back there. But the fact is, Arsenal is a club that should be pushing for further in the Champions League, and I think they've been really disappointing. It's the only time that you get to test yourself against the top top teams. Mm in Europe but you know in the world basically and I don't think they've done it very well the last few years so yeah I do think they're under pressure to do well unfortunately they got Leon. I think any other team even Barcelona at this the way they're playing recently even that would be an easier draw Mm. well we will have full analysis of that for you all next week as well as analysis on all the WSL action and the World Cup draw we will all be biting our nails watching that one although I'm at a wedding the day before and I think the draw is really early the next morning so I'm oh sure. behave can you still so be up <laughs> it'll be fine yeah that's right as long as I can stay up then it's absolutely fine and we are once again looking to give you the opportunity to win some money for your club thanks to our partners at Cabri we are supporting Irish women's grassroots football and we are giving away all the net profits from our most recent Cabri Roadshow in Vicar Street. Over the next few weeks, we'll be giving you the opportunity to win €1,000 worth of equipment for your local grassroots adult club. Uh, For your chance to be in for your chance to win and be in the pot, all you have to do is contact us with your club details and contact information at the pod at offtheball.com. Terms and conditions apply. Head over to otbsports.com for more. That's it for this week's pod. Like I said, we also, we, the Ballon d'Or result will be announced by then. We also have that and all the WSL. So it's going to be a very, very packed podcast next week, but we will do our best to get all the best bits to you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Karen. The Koi Gig Pod on OTB Sports in association with Cadbury. A player and a half deserves a glass and a half of support.